Good afternoon. I'd like to um, call the order the April 18th meeting of the LGCCA, Local Government Committee for Cooperative Action. I'm Ann Coletto, Vice Mayor of Thought Walk, and I'm yeah. taking the place of Mayor Nick Weedman, who is out of town on family business. He may arrive in the middle of the meeting with the fiscal meeting with the audience, so we'll see if he wants to come up. So I'm glad everyone was able to make it. If you could please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Luke and his group 
have collected a combined current year tax collection rate of 98.541%. And this is, this is April. We've got until the end of June to, before we report our final percentage of collection. We're very pleased with this percentage. It's slightly higher than it was this time last year. For the city of Hendersonville, we've collected 98.06%. Laurel Park, we've collected 99.397%. That's outstanding. Um, and we collect 16 parcels for the city of Saluda, and I'm proud to say that we collected 100% of those. So, <laughs> very glad for that. As far as your tax projections go, I expect the next set of projections will be emailed to you later on late this week or may perhaps, you know, Monday or Tuesday of next week. Um, I'm waiting on getting in some personal property adjustments that we need to make that I'd like to include in this next set of projections. I know a lot of you use that for your actual budget preparation, so um, I'd like to make sure that these are as accurate as possible. You should see a jump in personal property listings. That would include businesses and individual listings. Right now, we're 62% complete in business listings, 90% with unregistered motor vehicles, 71% with mobile homes, and 18% with watercraft. I'll be glad to answer any questions, and I also want to remind everyone that if you need, we collect a lot of data in our office. And if you have a need for data, check with us to see if we might be able to provide that to you. We'll be glad to do that. Any questions? Thank you. Um, I had a question. You had mentioned that you had 5% appeals in terms of the total number, and that was below the state average. It is. Is that about what your office expected, or is that higher or lower than, than what you It's a little bit less than we expected, because countywide we went up an average of over 48%. And so a lot of that, we really didn't know what to expect because with this economy and this real estate market, it's unprecedented, and it's that way across the whole state. I mean, all of the assessors, we had a meeting yesterday statewide, and all the assessors are still shaking their head because the prices are still going up. Mm -hmm. So um, it is less than we expected. With this particular um, reappraisal, we, um, I guess, planned for the worst and hoped for the best. So we budgeted our time based on 350 going to the board of VNR, and and so far we've got much less than that, about 100, 216. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Anyone um, else? Um, so I know you've already started appraising for the next four years. Yes. Um, do you anticipate a leveling off or a decline um, based on increase in interest rates and increase in our uh, supply? Because our supply is going to increase here, so that might help with with the uh, overall market. That that could affect the market. We have not seen that so far. I think um, if you look at the nationwide market, the interest rates are impacting that market. However, I've tried to track the interest rates with the sales, and I, I don't see any correlation. I don't see that the, the increase in interest rates are affecting the real estate market to a great degree at this point. I heard the same from both real estate and banking. Right. The same we follow NLS and um, at least, I mean, we keep us, we can give you figures back to 2008 on what the real estate market has done. And once um, I'm there. <laughs> 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 we don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> if you're a data geek, you like that kind of stuff. <laughs> but yeah, we, we don't see any any leveling off at this point. Maybe the prices are just a little bit lower. It takes a little bit longer, and I'll say a few days longer to sell a piece of property than it did a few months ago. But um, for the most part, there's no substantial change. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, next is Pathways for Disconnected Youth. If I'm not sure who's speaking on that. That's me. Okay. <laughs> Um, I do have a, a slide presentation, but I'm not going to show it today. I'm just going to kind of talk through it. I did this presentation for both Board of Commissioners and the Board of Education recently. Uh, for the past year and a half, since October 21, um, I have had a task force that has been working on developing pathways for disconnected youth in Henderson County. Uh, the way I got into this was through a statewide, and I think 
think I've talked about this in this group before, but some of you are new. Um, but I was in a statewide initiative for the same thing um, through the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners back in 2019. Um, our, my, the task force that I have is made up of a, an amazing group of people from um, health care to mental health care to DSS to the school system, counselors in the school system, Blue Ridge Community College, uh, the Recreation Department, um, we have an SRO on the team, um, foster care, it just, a, a group that's just full of knowledge and experience with this group of kids. Now, if you're wondering what is a disconnected youth, that is a child between the ages of 16 and 19 who is not in school or not working. They kind of just dropped out. And statewide in North Carolina, the percentage of those, that age group that falls in that category is 9.65%. So what about Henderson County? In 2017, our statistics were 7%. In 2019, our, no, it's 2020, our statistic was 8%. In 2022, we're up to 10% that fall in that category. So we're going in the wrong direction. Um, so um, my group is trying to come up with ways to help change that curve, change that graph. Um, some more statistics that you might be interested in. In Henderson County, 25% of our school-aged children, not this group, but just overall school-aged children, 25% of them have parents who have been incarcerated or are incarcerated. 56% are being raised by a single mom, 7% by a single father, and 14% are being raised by grandparents. And as of 2020, I believe the number is 363 of our school-aged children were considered homeless which means they were not living at the address that they put on their records. They were either couch surfing with a friend, living with a grandparent in foster care or something else. So we, we decided to look at what's causing this problem. Um, my background when I was working was to get to the root cause of a problem and, and stop it before it happens, rather than put a Band-Aid on it after it occurs. And we determined through this amazing group of people and a lot of research, and we've met 25 times, and we've had a lot of people come and speak to us about the problem who were involved in these, children, these types of children's lives. Um, the problem is a result of the lack of parenting. And, you know, we can sit back and say, well, those aren't my children. People have a responsibility to raise their own children. But... There is a problem with lack of parenting, and that's not just necessarily not getting involved in your child's life, which that is a big part of it, because just talk to a school teacher and ask them how many parents show up for parent-teacher conferences. Um, but it's maybe they're involved in the same way. Maybe they're handing them this, you know, to keep them quiet. This is a huge problem, huge. Um, but we realized there are a group of children that, and we did some research and we determined that and there's a lot of statistics out there about this. I, I challenge you to Google it and read about it. But um, children who participate in school and in after school activities, for the most part, stay in school, graduate, are happier in school, are happier in their social life, they do better with their schoolwork, all of the above. There are a group of children that aren't uh, provided the opportunity to participate in after school events because they don't have a ride home. They have to get on the yellow bus and go home. And nobody's gonna come pick them up. I was just telling Mayor Volk I'm thinking of starting an Uber service and just transporting my grandchildren because <laughs> to get a tax write-off. I'm not really going to do that, IRS, but, you know, um, because I'm back and forth at school so much, but not everybody has that grandparent or that parent or anybody that's willing to do that for them. So we presented this to, 
like I said, the Board of Commissioners and the school board, in order to use the buses for this op to do this, we did an estimate it would cost around $500,000 a year for all of the middle and high schools. Um, buses cost a lot of money to use, and you have to use CDL licensed drivers, and they have to be paid over time and all of that. So, actually our superintendent, our new superintendent, Mark Garrett, came up with this great idea um, to use vans, minivans. So, after my presentation to them last Monday, they made the decision they were going to use their ESSER funds and go ahead and purchase nine minivans to use at the four or the middle schools and the five high schools and offer and provide this for next school term. Um, if we can get the minivans. Have you ever have you tried buying something recently with four wheels on it? Um, <laughs> but that will open up the door for these kids to not just participate in sports or clubs or theater or band, but also stay after school with a teacher and get extra work on their homework or tutoring or just use the, the school resources because they don't have a computer or, or internet at home. Um, so I'm excited about this and what it's going to do for us um, and the change that it's going to make. But, and then the vans can also be used through the day for those activities and we have about 10 or 12 teen mothers who are still in high school who have, a trouble, who have trouble getting to school and getting their children, their babies, to the daycare facility. So it would help with that. So aside from that and beyond that, um, oh, and the, the, the van program will only cost us $200,000 a year, and that's probably a high estimate. Um, so beyond that, the next thing that we want to do is look at offering a mentoring program for all 7th through 12th grade students in Henderson County. We, are, we will be modeling a program that's in Rutherford County and it's 30 years old and very successful. They have a 4% dropout rate in Rutherford County. 4%, that's amazing. Um, every child meets with a mentor every other month for 15 minutes and they focus on career development, planning for the future, planning, you know, what your what classes you need to take, what are you interested in, do you want to become an electrician or do you want to become an electrical engineer and here's how you do that and here's schools that are open to you and here's scholarship opportunities and yeah, I'm going to help you fill out the FAFSA and if you know what a FAFSA is, you know that's a hard thing to do. Um, we have 6,000 students that fall in that category. We're going to need about 300 plus mentors. I'm looking at everybody in this room. Um, all mentors will be vetted. They'll go through a background check with the school system. But there are mentors in Rutherford County who have been doing this for 25 years. That's how dedicated they are to this program and how successful it's been. And the cool thing about it that I just love is like high school students, probably junior and senior age, can they can start mentoring in the elementary schools with the fourth and fifth graders. How scary is it for a fifth grader to think I've got to go to middle school next year? What's that all about? Um, so this will be our next step that we do moving forward with the task force for to develop pathways for disconnected youth. But um, just looking for the support from from all the municipalities and encouraging your employees to participate as mentors because I think together we can make a difference in the lives of children in Henderson County. Thanks very much. Yeah, any questions? Who's going to drive your vans? The teachers, well, coaches, that kind of thing? All or? of the above, yeah. And Parents? Yeah, um, because you don't have to have a CDL license for the vans. But it will have to be a qualified person, and parents will have to sign off to allow their children to, to be transported. And you know, there's going to be a process, but it'll be a whole lot easier to use vans than to use buses. And, and I have a quick question. So, how is or is it defined lack of parenting? Did you all get to the why that may be happening? Well, there's a lot of whys. Um, Sometimes it's just because there's not two parents in the family and the one parent is just overloaded, you know. Um, sometimes it's because
because there's drugs is sometimes a factor. Um, sometimes it's just not being involved in my child's life because I'm too involved in my own life, um, too too busy with my own career. To, and some people, you know, one thing that I would like for us to do for those parents who who want it, who are willing to participate, is provide a parenting class. You know, I remember when I had the first baby and they hand it to you and you go, what do I do with that? You know, <laughs> and thank goodness I had a mother-in-law and a mother who would raise children. But, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's difficult. Yeah. Has the nonprofit community heavily involved in oh, task force? Absolutely. Like brothers and sisters? Very much so. We've talked to them. We've talked to the Boys and Girls Club. We've, everybody's been in. Once we started this task force, my, my phone, phone was ringing and my email was blown off. People that wanted to be involved, the YMCA is involved, a lot of people are involved. So. I'm glad to hear about the parents getting involved too in your task force. I'm glad you all have been over a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Rebecca. Are you also the Henderson County Child Care Initiative? Who is that? Yeah, that's me. That's you too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next on our agenda. <laughs> Um, so the next task force that I'm co-chair with, uh, Amy Lynn Holt and myself are co-chairs, is the initiative to improve the child care problem in Henderson County. Uh, if you're an employer, you know how hard it is to get employees, and part of the problem is there's not enough child care for parents. Um, and believe it or not, there's enough child care facilities we have some facilities that aren't even being used because there's not enough workers. And the reason there's not enough workers in child care is that that's one of the lowest paying jobs we have. So um, I've talked to our legislators about helping from the state side. They're looking into that. And I think there is a bill out there to, to help with that. Um, but on lo locally, um, our task force is studying the problem and we have hired a consultant. <laughs> we hate to do that, but it was a very reasonably priced consultant and he's, he's worked on this problem all across the nation because it is a nationwide problem. And we are going to have a, a fact gathering session May 9th and we are inviting different groups to participate in the fact gathering session, all from parents to employers to child care facility workers um, to the school system to government. That's where you come in. Okay, the session for government related people, um, because we all have employees, but we all see the problem from a constituent side. So that session is going to be May 9th at 6 p.m. at my church, Bethel Wesleyan Church on Tracy Grove Road. And we're going to feed you dinner. Um, and just come and share what you know about the problem and listen to other people talk. And it's just, like I said, a Q&A fact-gathering session. Uh, so if you have people that work with your, your municipalities um, that would like to participate in this, or you yourself, uh, please send me an email so we can get a head count and know how many people are going to be there. That's what that's all about. So we will be working on this problem moving forward to see how we can resolve the issue. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Or? Okay. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, there was no old business. And there is no new business currently, so we'll move on to updates, uh, starting with the city of Henderson. Thank you. Well, our, the um, notice that we are most excited about is uh, that uh, we were, our fire department has been given an ISO rating of number one. So, and that will be effective July 1st. Uh, but uh, fortunately, they didn't make us hold off on the announcement until then. Uh, we were able to do that. Um, and it is 
possible. We, we were at a three, so we moved to a one, which we are hoping will mean that some of the fire insurance and premiums in the city of Hendersonville can be reduced. So we're uh, looking forward to the insurance companies taking a close look at that. A uh, lot of things going on in the month of May in particular in Hendersonville. Uh, the one that isn't as exciting is our budget workshop, which comes up on the 5th of May. But then the fun things start. The farmer's market opens on May 6th. The bears are coming out on May 10th. Rhythm and Brew starts on the 18th, and Memorial Day weekend is um, Garden Jubilee. So a lot of things going on in May, and even before that, coming up this Saturday, the 22nd, is the first, hopefully, annual Hendo Earth Fest. Uh, the North End of uh, Main Street is, and uh, Fifth Avenue will be closed. There'll be exhibits, uh, activities, uh, so come out and uh, help celebrate the earth and see what what can be done to improve the quality of it. Thank you. That'll do. Thank you. Um, next, Village of Flat Rock, that's me. We are having a shred day May 6th from 9 to 10 in the morning at the Village Hall. We had our budget workshop last week, so we are moving ahead on that. Um, Anyone who has been through the village knows that finally work on the North Island Lake Road project has started. Unfortunately, we've had a lot of trees come down over the past week. Um, the original end date for that project was March of 2024, but considering that they're a year or two behind in starting, um, I'm not exactly sure what the new end date might be, but I'm assuming it's not going to be just a few months from now. Uh, we're getting ready to put two speed signs up on Greenville Highway. I don't know if you've seen these. I know the city of Hendersonville has some, and it flashes what your speed limit is. We got our speed limit lowered through the center of the village last year or two years ago, down to 25. And so we're putting up on Greenville Highway, southbound and northbound, um, one of the speed signs so people can see how fast they're going. And hopefully that will just remind them that they need to slow down. If that seems to be slowing traffic, we'll probably look into putting some on the Little River Road as well, because we get a lot of speed on the Little River Road. Uh, there are two pieces of legislation in the General Assembly that the Village Council has been looking at, and I would be interested in, in hearing what other municipalities are thinking about them, if you'd like to share. The first one is Senate Bill 265, which would move the municipal elections to even number of years, as opposed to what we currently have. The Village Council at our April 3rd meeting voted unanimously to oppose S-265 and to request that Flat Rock be removed from the text of that bill. Mayor Weedman has contacted both um, Senator Moffitt and Representative Jake Johnson, who represents Flat Rock. Um, I'm not sure exactly what or if he's heard back from them at this point, but he has been in touch with them. And for those who haven't seen it yet, in today's online Hendersonville Lightning um, Hendersonville City Council Member Jerry Smith has an op-ed on Hendersonville's opposition to S-265. We're also looking at Senate Bill 317, which changes um, a municipal, municipality's ability to control its own zoning and establishes a statewide mandate for local communities to allow workforce housing developments, which is a new type of residential development not subject to local planning and zoning regulations. Um, council has not voted on that formally, but it's the consensus of the Fat Rock Village Council that, in, in theory, we're opposed to that, given as the bill is currently written. And like I said, um, we would be interested in hearing, either in this meeting or by phone call, what other municipalities might, might think about that legislation. That's where we are. Uh, and then Town of Laurel Park. Like everyone else here, we're currently working on the budgets, um, and uh, we are about ready to start on stream restoration uh, down at Laurel Green. Um, we have we are about ready to let a stormwater contract for about seven hundred thousand dollars to manage our stormwater on the mountain, and our roadway improvements. We'll be doing some pretty substantial. 
substantial uh, roadway improvements to the tune of about a million dollars this year, which is about a third of our budget, so it's pretty significant. That's all I have for now. Thank you. Um, Tom Fletcher. Yeah, thank you. This past weekend, we had a shred event and a pillow drop and a free mulch event, so lots of happening. Uh, went very successfully. Uh, we had a budget workshop in May, or we'll uh, March, excuse me, we'll our retreat in May. Uh, recently, like in the past year, did a market study, and the conclusion of the market study came that we needed to do a 2.5% two, two raise. For our staff members, we ended up doing it in a very interesting way. We took the total number, or the total amount of all the salaries, times out two and a half percent, divided by how many the staff members we had, and everybody got the same amount added to their salary. So I brought up a lot of our lower ended paid paying employees, like some of our police officers and public work. So it ended up being very successful. Um, I shared, I think in January, that the uh, developer for our, our town center projects. So we've been working with DOT. To get those mitigation improvements rain back in, we really thought that the scope was way beyond the actual project. I recently did a resolution designated future right away for Old Cane Creek Road, which we needed for, uh, for DOT, which we needed for the future build out of town center, and for Senate Bill 265, the election bill. Uh, the town hasn't yet taken a position on it. All our council members are aware and the town's aware of it, but we don't have an official position. And for Senate Bill 317 on zone, we don't have an official position. Councilman, do you have anything else to add? Uh, no, we did um, our child children program at the park in Fletcher mm -hmm. sold out in one day. So. Oh, the summer camp. Yeah, our summer camp yeah, sold so out within one day. So that was kind of big. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have a wonderful parks and rec department in our summer camp as well. Every single every single year, last year, and by the way, I go down the water supply, so that was a lot of fun. So <laughs> we're looking forward to that again. But things are going well in Fletcher. Um, Henderson County, which you call. Okay, on April 22nd, we are, this which is Saturday, we are teaming up with the city to have a trash pickup time um, at the intersection of Four Seasons Boulevard and Dana Road. Um, I will be wearing my bright yellow safety vest. Um, it'll be from 9 to 11, um, just to encourage people to get out and pick up trash on the side of the road during the NCBOT Litter Sweep Week. Um, two weeks actually. And then everybody's interested in the tax, um, what the tax rate is going to be. Uh, our budget should be presented to us by the staff May 17th at that meeting, and then we will determine our tax rate for the next year for in, on June 5th. So everybody will be anxiously awaiting that number. Um, and then Big shout out to our Parks and Rec. Um, kind of what you were saying, we have several camps planned for the summer for everything from basketball camp to art camp to yoga camp to, I mean, there's all kind of camps available. And I think all of them sold out only in one day when, uh, when they opened up on the uh, internet. But um, the new all-inclusive playground is almost ready. We're going to cut the ribbon on May 13th. I was out there this morning. And sh big shout out to Future Farmers of America and Horticulture uh, Departments at North Henderson, um, East Henderson, and West Henderson. They had staff students out there planting plants and doing landscaping for that new playground. And it looks, it looks beautiful. And I'm just so proud that we had those youth participating in this in this program, so that's all we got. I had one question about that. Um, did you all, did the county buy the property next to East Flat Rock Park? Yes, okay. we did. Um, there's how many acres? About 12. 12 acres. It actually adjoins, there's a, there's a field, a ball field on the back side of East Flat Rock Park, um, and it adjoins that, and so it just made sense. It came up for sale, yes, we did. We, have, we don't really have any plans for it right now. Well, we talked about putting disc golf and maybe a walking trail through it. Thank you. Um, and the town of Mills River. 
Yeah, the Town Mills River's uh, collecting some data through the town manager for our budget, getting that going. We're also working with some nonprofits with some ARPA money we're set aside to distribute back out to those folks to get them back up and running at full speed if possible. And uh, Council Lady Sandra Goo just got us a list of our upcoming events and stuff for May. Yes, Mills River, I've got going on in May. The sunshades have been put back up over the playground for the summer for the little children. And the grass area is open in the dog park weather committee as long as we don't get torrential downpours. And Milch River Park was selected as one of ten pilot sites for the Blue Ridge Snorkel Trail Program. And this sounds like a lot of fun. May the 6th will start with the opening day of Farmer's Market at Mills River Elementary School, and the hours are from 8 to 12. Then you can go to Mills River Day at North River Farms. That's on North Mills River Road. Um, a wonderful day on the working farm from 11 to 5. The day will feature live music, vendors, food trucks, a kid zone, well tied down bounce houses, <laughs> a tractor show, a horse show, arm tour, and hands on activities, and much more. And it's free. So everybody's welcome to come back. And May 13th, the Mills River Fire Department will be having their annual flower sale from 8 to 3. So bring them on out and you can get our flower. <laughs> Mills River Community Center will have their yard sale the same day, so you can go from the fire department to the community center, and they're helping to raise funds for the community center. It's from 8 to 12. And then you can come by the farmer's market, Mills River Elementary School, for vegetables, food, and good friends. And we're looking forward to May the 20th, which is our second movie in the park. And we're going to be showing Sonic 2. And if you've ever been to a movie in the park, it's wonderful out there. You've got the airport behind you and airplanes taking off, and it's just so festive. <laughs> so bring a blanket or chairs, snacks, and come enjoy a movie in the park, and it'll start at dark. And if you need any more information on this, you can go to the website, and all of it's on there, too. Thank you. And hearing all of that, I realized I forgot. And I feel kind of pathetic just to mention one little thing, but Flat Rock is having their ice cream social June 10th from noon to 4. Free ice cream and lots of music. And cornhole. Is there anyone, anything else that anyone would like to mention before we adjourn? Okay. Um, the next meeting is going to be July 18th, hosted by the town of Fletcher. And other than that, do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Preston. Um, do I have a second? Second. Adjourned. Thank you.